starting in 1989. Waves of reports of black triangular UFOs were reported being seen in the skies above the country of Belgium. This culminated in the Belgian Air Force scrambling two F-16 fighters to investigate what was seen on radar, but they didn't find anything. Was indeed it a hoax, as has been claimed by some people. Join myself and Neil here on Aliens Explored as we discuss the Belgian UFO wave. And a big shout out, of course, to our Explorer of the Week, Jonathan Perner. Jonathan, it is thanks to you that we are able to discuss the Belgian UFO wave because you have supporters on Patreon. Uh, now, you too, listeners, can be an Explorer of the Week just like Jonathan by going to patreon.com forward slash aliens explored and picking a tier at Explorer of the Week or above. We've got lots of goodies there, so do have a look. And uh, yes, Jonathan Burner, thank you so much for allowing us to do this episode. You're a superstar and we thank you for it. <laughs> Aliens Explored is a weekly podcast exploring famous and obscure cases of UFO sightings, alien abductions and other strange events from both a believing and a sceptical perspective whilst keeping an open mind. I'm Stu Jackson, a professional actor and amateur ufologist with a particular interest in the crop circle phenomenon. I'll be debating that otherworldly visitations are real. The truth is out there. And I'm Neil Kelly. I'm a professional actor as well and used to work for the military as an intelligence analyst. I'll be arguing from a more doubtful point of view. I mean, it's all a bit far-fetched, isn't it? Hello, listeners, and welcome back to Aliens Explored, your weekly look at the uh, mysterious and potentially hostile skies above us. Um, and, and, and who knows what else might be, what, what's out there waiting, waiting to ambush us. Um, I'm one of your hosts, Neil Kelly. And I'm coming in peace. I'm Stu Jackson, your other host. Good. <laughs> I'm sure they're coming in. Well, some of them are coming in peace. Well, they might well, be coming think, in peace, but you never know. You know, we've all seen more of the worlds. and uh, We have. We have. But there's, there's a theory I heard that... Um, that for any race to have survived long enough to get the technology to cross the vast interstellar distances required mm. to make contact, um, that they would have to have evolved long, way beyond sort of war and self-annihilation and destruction. You know, they'd have to be a peaceful society. So we're, we're basically judging them by our own standards we were saying, well, you can't possibly reach that level of technology because you'd have destroyed yourself in a war before you before you got that far. Well, that's not an unreasonable thing to think that perhaps mm. a lot of societies did. I I rewatched. I mean, you mentioned in War of the Worlds. I I rewatched um, the remake of the Day the Earth Stood Still recently, mm. uh, and there was mention in that. Uh, well, obviously, it's a work of fiction, but. Um, mm. But they did mention in that they talked about like basically the galactic community and how most societies do not make it. Um, they end up destroying themselves. Mm. So yeah, it's an interesting that that's a whole different topic to what we're talking about today, yes. isn't it? it in fact, uh, yeah, the Earth has been re around long enough for us to have developed an advanced situation an advanced civilization a long way back in the past and then destroyed ourselves and then started again mm, yeah yeah well there are theories that there were races of dinosaurs that survived and and still to this day have have evolved into a humanoid form and kind of live amongst uh, us <laughs> and rule over us they, they are <laughs> our, our overlords 
There so, are but, those uh, that think this, yes. <laughs> yes. So this week, uh, our topic is the uh, the 1989-1990 stroke wave of UFO sightings in the little te- little country of Belgium in Northern Europe. Yes, I don't, I don't know if they'll appreciate being called little. <laughs> well, I, th- I think they admit they're quite little. Yeah, and they're a proud to... nation, I'm sure. A, a, a proud, <laughs> a proud nation. Yeah, I, I mean, but... I always struggle to differentiate. I'll be honest between France and Belgium. Do you? Yeah. Well, that, that's more offensive, mate. Than, that's more offensive than, than calling them little. Well, is it? <laughs> no, I mean, calling <laughs> them French would be offensive, but I, I recognise the difference. I'm saying, like, uh, accent it was, wise and. It, it would certainly be Culturally. offensive to the to the Dutch speakers or Flemish speakers among well, them. Okay, yes, if they're speaking Flemish, then I might recognise that they're not French. Mm. <laughs> well, I would yeah, it is. That. It, it is a small but divided country. So, in the north and I think it's in the north and east, you've got the Dutch speakers, and in the south and west of the country, you've got the French speakers. And the dividing line goes right through the middle of Brussels, the capital. And apparently there are there are often fights or all sorts of vandals in the street because the street names will have a French name and and a Flemish name and uh, people will argue over which should be most prominent. Oh right, which, or, which... or which should be above which? It's a bit like the billing on a <laughs> on a poster for a movie. You know who goes at the top. You know? Well, we all know that Stu Jackson comes before Neil Kelly in any billing. <laughs> 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 Only alphabetically. Um, actually, uh, do you know what? I'm going to I'm going to digress back back to because we normally do a little chat beforehand, don't we? Mm. Um, I wanted to thank you uh, while we're on air um, because of you. I've got a Christmas job lined up, so thank you very much, Neil. Hey, you're welcome. I probably won't see you because I think we're not located at the same site. But, I think, uh, yeah, we're, we're working for the same people, but yes, at different locations probably. But uh, but no, mm. I, I yeah, um, you gave me a nice little um, um, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Reference, reference. That's it. Um, <laughs> yeah. So thank you for that. There we go. Can't get much more public than this podcast, mate. <laughs> <laughs> you're very welcome so we're both going to be I'll father christmases public, thank you. somewhat you're going to be was it high wickham you're looking for and uh high wickham is where i live so it kind of makes sense <laughs> yeah it really does <laughs> i've got I'll a be, venue here I'll, I'll be camping out in leighton buzzard nice nice mm. um not that you'll get to see much of it i don't imagine no. um no. but uh yes and of course we're only in may yeah, I'm already so, thinking about Christmas. Yeah, I, I, I should probably find something to do between now and then. It's it probably money will last that long. <laughs> yeah, but are you are you looking forward to getting back to being, um, kind of an in person thing? Um. Yeah. Yeah. I went. I, I, I did it last year. Uh, yes, but that um, was more of a story time, wasn't it? I think this year they're going for more. Like meeting a family at a time, like more like what we're used to. Then you know more than me. I thought it would be the yeah. same thing again. That um, ah. there'll be a inside be knowledge, a... mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's probably had to explain it to me a bit more because you know new mm. coming in. Um, but yeah, it's okay. That's the plan, apparently. Of course, plans can change. And yeah. uh, as we're here in the UK, about to go over 200,000 deaths from COVID, which is unforgivable and mm. avoidable. Um, and we're still getting people, 1,000 people a week dying of COVID. Yeah, that, yeah. That's, that's two or three jumbo jets crashing every week. But there the are um, no are people, measures uh, whatsoever. No, people, People have just decided it's all over because they've been told it's all over and because they wanted to believe it's all over. So, yes, they're not taking precautions. And, uh, I, you know, a, a friend of mine is has just come out of hospital. She was very, very ill with it. And she, she'd had it before, um, and I've heard this a lot. She'd had COVID before, didn't really bother her, shrugged it off. There was no news of a new strain or anything like that. A couple of months later, she got it again, so assuming it's the same strain. This one, put it actually just felt worse and worse and worse. And then the next thing I heard was, oh, she's 
been released from hospital. Mm, that's so. sad to hear. Um, and people are getting it over and over again. Uh, I was yeah. I was chatting to a friend of mine. Well, actually, she, she's a friend who helped work on the vaccine in Oxford. Mm. Um, and because uh, uh, she's like, oh, she's got medical doctorates mm. coming out of her ears and normally works on vaccines mm. and things anyway but so she was sort of drafted in to help with the covid vaccine and and um yeah and she was saying that because she'd had covid at one point mm. and i was saying she's she very keen on salsa dancing and i said are you back doing salsa yet and she's like oh yeah because i've had it i feel like i'm immune now i'm thinking you You're really know you should know yeah. better than this really I, but people I mean, don't want to hear that it's not that it's not over. I mean, there are some things for some reason. I'm thinking of bee stings that if you get stung by a bee and it keeps happening, you don't build up an immunity, you build up a vulnerability. And then at some point, you would just suddenly go into an anaphylactic shock and potentially die. That might be the case for some. I mean, it might be some people are becoming more immune, but there's so many variants as well. Um, yeah. But anyway, we've really gone down a rabbit hole with that digression. We, we have, where, yes. Where yeah. I just wanted to thank you. <laughs> um, but certainly, certainly, COVID was a was a hostile alien invader, wasn't it? It was it indeed. Probably didn't, probably didn't come from space, but it probably well, did. We jump. have an epi- We have an episode all about that. Right. Okay. Well, don't I'll, you remember I'll, I'll... we discussed that? <laughs> oh, we did. Yeah. Did it come from space? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 The the Andromeda strain. I mean, ninety-five episodes in. There's, we've we've talked about a lot of things. We we certainly <laughs> have. Yeah, we haven't made much sense about them, but we've certainly talked about them. It makes some sense. I like to think <laughs> yeah. that. Uh, yeah, we've had a lot more to discuss ahead of us as well. Mm. Um, yeah. So, back, speaking of which, back onto uh, this Belgium wave of UFOs around yeah. nineteen eighty-nine and ninety. Um, now, what's I find particularly intriguing about this is hmm. it's all the same type of UFO repeatedly over and over again. It's the black triangular soundless UFOs that people are reporting over and over again. It's mm-hmm. worth mentioning that the reports didn't actually start until November of 1989 but the reports actually went back some time. Um, now, this, I think, is a perfect example of a situation where a newspaper or, or media outlet will report a UFO, and then other people will realise that they've seen a similar thing. Um, and, you know, some people will just go, oh, I saw something that I didn't realise it was newsworthy. Okay, mm. I'll report it. Or some people might feel less embarrassed or ashamed coming forward and talking about it because I still, to this day, I mean, in 2022, there is a lot of stigma attached to UFOs and reporting them and being taken seriously. So back 30 years ago, 30 plus years ago, yes, of course, there was a lot more stigma. So, yeah, having it sort of reported seriously in a news mm. outlet will encourage people to come forward and because they'll feel they might be taken more seriously. Well, it, it, it has been suggested that, that this is actually interesting as a case of, of mass psychosis or mass hysteria. As you say, um, a lot of people reported these things a long time after they allegedly seen them. And it was, you know, they, they see a news item about, about a UFO and they think, oh, yeah, I saw which quite near to where they live. And they think, well, yeah, I, saw, I remember seeing a light in the sky. So, yeah, I, I saw a UFO. Um, it, it has been suggested that um, th- these reports would be better studied by people in the human scientists, sciences than by physicists because well, it is because of this natural phenomenon. Now, they, they did scramble, the Belgian Air Force did scramble a couple of F-16s to try and track uh, down yes. these things. This was um, on the 30th and 31st of March in 1990. Yes. Now, the, the F-16s, um, they didn't get a visual sighting of anything. They claimed to have made, I think it was something like nine radar contacts 
Although when they when they got back to base, they, that was confirmed. They'd only made three, and actually, what they'd locked onto was each other. I, I was about to say what you're calling radar contacts is weapons locks. Yeah, that's that's but, not radar. Um, there were mon- this UFO mm. was monitored by a radar station. Uh, yeah. which was very firmly on the radar of. And it was seen by people. It was seen witnessed by dozens of people mm. at the time as well. There's even quite famously a photograph of it. And it's well, a good photo. But someone has also come forward and said, oh no, that was me. It was a hoax. I've got a bit of triangular polystyrene. I painted it black. I put a few flashlights on it and, um, and took a couple of pictures. And it, Oh, you're talking about this person who only identifies himself as Patrick, claims to have done it when he was 18 years old. And I'm sorry, he's a lying t- <laughs> You he's, think? he's Yes, he is doing this purely for attention. Or maybe he's mm. been bought off by someone to try and discredit the whole thing. But he's mm. like, do you know how angry I get about Doug and Dave over the crop circle thing? Yeah. He's like that. He's one of those. He's just, yeah. I'm sorry. We are talking dozens of witnesses. We are talking the Belgian Air Force tracking this thing on radar, not over a matter of, oh, look, there's a blip, but you hmm. know, over a long period of time. We are talking about hundreds of, of isolated witnesses all coming forward over a period of time saying what they'd seen and that it was the same thing. And like I say, there is a photograph of this thing. I'm sorry, black bits of polystyrene don't produce lights. Well, they do if you stick lights on them. Well, yeah, but then you can't yes, make yeah. it fly because the lights will make it too heavy. No, they, you said they, they dangled it on a bit of string and just faked the photo. We so, look at the photo, it's way up above everyone. Where were they dangling it from? There were no large buildings, no tall structures. No, they're saying it's a, it's a faked photo. The, That's what the, the hoax are claiming. Yeah, we, we faked it all. We just superimposed it on a picture. Okay, the photograph came from someone else. <laughs> hmm. Ah, no. It, 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 it really angers me when people come forward with things like that because it's absolute nonsense. Um, one look at the photo tells you that that's not the case. The location mm. it was in, the amount of people that saw it. No, it's just, yeah, people are obfuscating the actual truth. They're making it more difficult for genuine research to happen. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing myself. I'm quite angry about this. You, you are, yeah. You're getting into a bit of a, a Scott C. Waring kind of feud. So it's, yeah. <laughs> People are discrediting this whole thing by making it entertainment and and, well, and faking things. No, I have no problem with entertainment. No, faking things. I do. I do feel is um, it's counterproductive to hmm. actual genuine research. And do you know what? If if there was genuine research out there that comes up with a terrestrial natural explanation for all the ufos for all the experiences that people have had and it is a calm rational down-to-earth explanation i'd be happy with that Hmm. i'd accept that that. there, there were supposedly thousands of sightings um so these these um f-16s managed to obtain a radar lock Later shown that radar locks on each other, weapons locks. Um, they never re- they they never reported seeing any of the claim sightings, saw none of the claim maneuvers, and um, and uh, other other contacts. Many of them were found to be the result of a well known atmospheric interference called Bragg scattering, according to Wikimedia, which is a it's a, a condition or or loud Bragg interference. Sorry, Some did you just diff- say Wikimedia, or did you mispronounce Wikipedia? Wikipedia. <laughs> oh, right. I mispronounced, yeah. yeah. Wikipedia. Um, well, it's bas- websites I've not come across. It, it, it's but. basically um, <laughs> coherent scattering away from a crystal lattice. I suppose it's an atmospheric thing caused by caused by moisture in the air, I guess, and reflects light. 
Okay, I am it's, looking um, the, at the photograph right now. Mm. Isn't that the one that the, the tri- guy faked? No, <laughs> it's not no. faked. It's not faked. It's it, mm. it's what people saw. Witnesses were there. No. They said, "I saw that." Yes, Patrick Marischal. Oh, he, you've got a surname one, for him. Yeah, he claimed to have made. Have you got an address UFO. for him? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I could find it out. Embedded a flashlight in each corner and hung it from a string. It's not. Oh mm, no. And I've got a picture of the thing that he made, which looks, you know, it's... That, and, and, of course, you can't tell how big it is from the picture because there's there's no, nothing around to reference it. So it could no, be something the size of a football pitch. Straight it could up. Be. And that's the point. There was nothing around it. Where did he suspend it from? Oh, no, it, it was just, you know, you can't see it in the picture. That's all. You suspend okay. it from a bit of string. Okay. But, so, well... Now, what did he attach the string to then? Well, the ceiling in in a dark room, and then just took a picture, turned the lights on on these black objects, and took a picture. Oh, he's of it. claiming he took the photograph. Yeah, yeah. They'd taken a sheet of styrofoam, cut it into a triangle, painted it black, embedded a flashlight in each corner, then hung it from a string. Marichal still had many photos that they had taken trying to get that one that fooled the world, he said. So it took them a while to get it right. I'm sure it's come from a different photographer. Mm. I'm saying photographer. I don't think they were a professional photographer. There's also something, um, a mass delusion explanation. Um, Someone called Philip J. Class, who was an American journalist. We mentioned Philip J. Class more than once. We we have, yeah. Yeah. and uh, he said what, what we said at, at just a, a little while ago, that once news coverage leads the public to believe that UFOs may be in the vicinity, there are numerous natural and man-made objects, which, especially seen at night, can take on unusual characteristics in the minds of hopeful viewers. Their UFO reports, in turn, add to the mass excitement, which encourages still more observers to watch for UFOs. The situation feeds upon itself until such time as the media lose interest in the subject, and then the flap quickly runs out of steam. Right. Class, Philip J. Class, Mm. who has Mm. none, by the way, um, Mm. is the guy who tried to bribe people to change their stories. That's right. Yes, he did. He tried to pay off people to stop talking about UFOs. Mm. Oh, so, yeah. I mean, he's, um, he's, a, he's a UFO sceptic, and um, he makes it his business to debunk UFO claims. Yes, he um, does. He, he's been, he's been, apparently, he's been called the, the Sherlock Holmes of UFOlogy, um, possibly by himself. I imagine so. Uh, That's uh, People do this. Um, our old friend Nick Pope mm, calls yeah. himself the Fox Mulder. Of the UFO, oh, does he? yeah, and or oh, the British Fox Mulder, I think he calls himself. Oh, right, it's bollocks. Mm. <laughs> it really is. Um, so yeah, whatever Philip J. Class might call himself, I know what I call him. And but but there is something in it, isn't it, that that people are likely to attribute um, UFO, UFO sightings, uh, ufology to. If they've been told there are UFOs around and they see something in the sky which they can't immediately identify, I um, yeah, I, so I, that I, becomes a, that becomes a UFO. So to play absolutely fair game, yes, there will be those. But if they can't identify it, that makes it a UFO by definition. Um, if they can't well, yeah. identify it, but yes, it could well be the m- misidentification is a real thing. Um, yeah, in, in the UFO community, as is and, and, people who and in the air thi- defense community. Yeah, as is people who make things up just for attention. It's a real yeah. thing. It's a real problem. I, I mean, they, absolutely called, agree. They they are called UFOs because they're just an unidentified flying object. If we knew what they were, they'd be an IFO, wouldn't they? They'd be an exactly. unidentified flying object. And in fact, the 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 American. Well, I suppose the Ministry of Defence and the American Department of Defence have decided to even make the definition even broader by calling it um, 
UAP, a UAP yes. uh, unidentified aerial phenomena that it might not even be an object. It could just yeah. be something caused by it, it atmospherics. Could, or... It could potentially be, and it could be a falling object, not a flying object. It could be uh, a floating. I mean, these are all words beginning with well, F. I don't know why I'm fixating mm. on those. Um, but it doesn't necessarily have to be flying either. It can just be airborne. Well, a satellite is a falling object, isn't it? Uh, apparently, that's how they work. Is their constant? That's falling, how they work. But yeah, but the because they, they've got for something. Well, no, because they're, they're constantly missing the Earth. They're just constantly falling past it. Apparently, so I've I've heard that yeah. before. Um, mm. But yeah, I, I'm absolutely look. I'm on board with the idea that there are people out there who either deliberately or accidentally um, misrepresent a natural phenomenon as, a, I'll, I'll use the term UFO for ease of it. Um, mm. But, yeah, I, I, there will always be those. But you said it yourself. You are talking about thousands of witnesses. Now, bear in mind, mm. for every one person who is so desperate for attention, they'll claim to have seen an alien spacecraft all right there are I'm, and this is this is not an official statistic but i would bet mm. there are 10 people who have seen something really strange who won't come forward for fear of ridicule there, there is that yeah but there's also it, it it does feed upon itself yeah, another skeptic um brian andrew dunning American writer and producer, has a weekly weekly podcast called The Skeptoid. Um, uh, regarding the wave of eyewitness reports, he said, well, you know, you read in a story in the paper that a UFO was seen flying over your town a night or two ago. You remember that you saw something that you took for a bright star or an airplane, thought nothing of it. But then this amazing new story makes you realise, in inverted commas, that what you saw must have been this UFO. Yeah, I mean... Well, okay. That, that's, it, he, in, in the same way that people like class are persuading people that they didn't see a UFO, a story about UFOs will persuade people that they have when actually to, to misidentify something mundane or prosaic. I think the reality is, as, as is often the way with these things, not at either extreme end of the spectrum, but rather it might cause people to question what they've seen. And now, then they report it because... That's what you do. Now, were there any real-world consequences of this UFO wave? Was well, there, or, yes, or did thousands it all just, of witnesses? <laughs> yeah, but what I mean is, did did were there sort of negative effects? Did people panic? Did people kill each other? Did they, you know, were there antisocial? I've, I've never heard of that happening. That I, can I mean, the think reason of they say the top of my head. The, the reason they say oh, they can't tell us about UFOs is because we'd panic. So what I'm wondering is, well, did anyone actually panic? Did did anything? Was anyone hurt by this, or did it all just what? Well, did it all just die out? Well, no. Um, yeah, it, yeah, it just died out. But where what, what, you're, what you're talking about there is a very, very different thing, which is an entire society being mm. told absolutely categorically alien extraterrestrial life is real and they are visiting. That is a million miles away from seeing an unidentified object in the sky and thinking, I wonder if that's an alien craft. The, 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 the parallel I'm drawing is perhaps from... Yeah, it, it still happens today, but not, but not, not so much in this country anymore. When there's suddenly a, a scare about witches or Satanists, that that real harm is done to people who who get caught up in it. Some, you know, uh, some I, I attended a lecture a couple of years ago where I was told that somewhere something around twenty five thousand people a year are killed. Um, because they're believed to be either witches or possessed by demons every year, and it's not just in places like India or or, or Africa. It's you know in in Europe, in the United States, in Britain, people are being murdered in these sort of odd exorcisms. So 
I just want if there was a kind of parallel when people suddenly th- think we're being invaded by UFOs or we're, we've got this wave of extraterrestrials coming, uh, does anything happen as a result? I I would say kind of in broad strokes, no, you don't get a parallel quite like that. In fact, if anything, it's you do get you do get a similar thing, not as severe, I would say, hmm. for the vast majority of cases, but you do get a thing at the opposite end of the spectrum, whereby when people come forward and say, I've had and we we've talked about people being ridiculed a lot on this show. Hmm. Um, you know, by saying, Well, I believe in extraterrestrials or, you know, I believe I had this experience and and people come forward and they become public and they get ridiculed. People lose their jobs over things like that. Yeah. People get shunned by their friends. They're, I mean, not much, <laughs> not, not really good friends if, uh, if they're shunning, mm. but, you know, they'll, and entire communities will turn their back on people. And uh, I'm, I, I I can't think of any examples off the top of my head, but I bet there are some real serious consequences in terms of mental health for people. Well, when you think this is like 1980, this was 1989, 1990, mm-hmm. the Berlin Wall was still up. Germany was still divided into two separate countries. Um, the Soviet Union and the Warsaw Pact were all staring in the place. So if these UFOs had suddenly appeared, I don't know, 100 miles or so further to the east over the inner German border, that could have had much more serious consequences, couldn't it? There's suddenly, suddenly each side is seeing these aircraft they can't identify. Um, that could, <laughs> yeah, who knows what that could lead to. That could, well, we could end up destroying ourselves. There are there are rumored to be um, some really good quality uh, UFO records and documentations held in Russia um, mm. from the Cold War that still haven't been shared. Now I know that um, I remember during the Cold War that certainly our own generals and politicians were concerned that somehow. Um, the Soviets would get a technological leap on us that they would suddenly produce an aircraft that we couldn't shoot down that could invade our airspace with impunity and cause wreak massive destruction. Um, and I suppose um, Soviet generals and politicians were worried about exactly the same thing, probably with more justification because their technology was rather more rudimentary. Mm. Where was I going with this? Yeah. So this, 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 worry about ufos was really a worry about an an enemy with a superior capability to you yes absolutely um anyway we're we're getting a little bit off track there so um so to bring it back in then let's Mm. let's summarize in fact um neil this ufo wave then Mm. is is that what you you've broken it down into lots of different theories that one person fabricated a uh, a UFO out of a bit of polystyrene in one place, and other people have heard about different UFOs, so think that they've seen UFOs as well. Mm. Um, that's kind of a it, it sounds to me like a scattergun sort of defense, really. Well, it, it kind of is, isn't it? Because what we see is, you know, an unidentified flying object. People will attribute things to it. A lot of the, the reports, the sightings came in a long time. They, they didn't say, I saw it an hour ago or I saw it last night. They said, I saw it three weeks ago. Oh, yeah, I've just read this story in the paper. Yeah, I saw that too. So I think oh, there's... Much there's, further back than that, yeah. Yeah, there, there's there's an element of that. Um, people suddenly attribute things that they hadn't paid much attention to at the time. I think that there could be unusual atmospherics that a lot of the things that a lot of the sightings have been explained, but some of them haven't. We still don't know what they are. They are UFOs. Yeah. Doesn't mean, doesn't mean they're flying saucers, but they are still UFOs. I mean, you're saying people um, saw these things and then sort of misremember them. I think it's more that by it becoming public knowledge, they are more prepared to come forward and admit that they've seen something. No, I think they would see something like a bright light in the sky and think, oh, yeah, it's probably a helicopter or a, a military aircraft. 
don't pay any more attention. And then they read in the paper the next day or see on television the next day, oh, there was a UFO. And they think, oh, that's what it was. That's what I saw. But if they hadn't had that that suggestion, they wouldn't have thought about it again. And do you know what? The truth is probably a bit of both. The truth is out there. Yeah, the truth <laughs> is a bit of both. So we do have um, a lot of these UFOs are now IFOs, but some of them aren't. Well, I remain firmly convinced that there was a wave of triangular-shaped UFOs over Belgium around <laughs> 1989 and 90. Um, and I, I mean, I couldn't be persuaded otherwise by hard evidence. But, but, but you have a bid by me. You have been persuaded otherwise by me. That's all we're doing is speculate. But that's true for both sides, so there we go. Yeah. But what do you think, listeners, was the wave a real thing or was it something that was simply misinterpreted um, or somewhere in between? Do let us know via the usual means. You can email us, aliensexplored at gmail.com. You can find us on Facebook and Twitter by searching Aliens Explored. Or if you are one of our Patreons, you can get access to our exclusive and I mean exclusive Discord server where there are other like-minded people. Um, and pe- Well, there are actually people on both sides of the fence in there uh, debating quite happily and quite pleasantly and quite nicely. Nicer than you and me sometimes, <laughs> Neil, um, about various subjects. It's, so, it's the edit. You, you edit it to make it sound like we're shouting at each other. <laughs> 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 oh, I might have to try that now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so uh, so do if you want to sign up to the Patreon and uh, and get access to that Discord server as well as numerous other benefits, then uh, just go to patreon.com forward slash aliens explored and any tier will get you access to the Discord server. But like I say, there are some lovely, lovely things that you can get in there as well. So have a good look at that. Join us next time, though, uh, when we'll be doing one of our uh, examinations of the life and works type things, Um, Mm -hmm. this time of the author George Adamski. Uh, George very famously gave us some really good photographs of flying saucers. So don't miss that one. I look forward to it. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to it already uh, because I love proving you wrong, Neil. (laughs) (laughs) That's my job on this show, isn't it? To just turn up and be wrong, to express an excellent opinion, an an ignorant opinion, and then just be told you're wrong. There are are a lot of listeners. um, It's quite surprising because... It being a, I'm going off on a slight tangent now all of a sudden, but mm. um, it being a UFO podcast, I thought, do you know what? The vast majority of our listeners are going to be people who are, are like me, who, who are mm. believers. Actually, now hearing from a lot of the listeners, a lot of them actually side with you, Neil, that there are more terrestrial explanations uh, to things. Mm. Uh, so there's a good balance. There is a good balance amongst that's, our that's good, to hear. That's, that's good to hear. I'm, 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 I'm making some traction. Absolutely. It's, uh, we both are. And that's what's really good. Yeah. It's, it's, it's great to hear both sides of the debate, mm. uh, which is what we're all about. So, yes, yeah, so do join us next time uh, for that. In the meantime, keep watching those skies and reporting UFOs wherever you see them don't worry about what Neil says do report them anyway and uh, yeah we will see you next time I look forward to it take care for now bye bye Aliens Explored is a Fiegel Films production in association with Juicy Falls Music by Darren Mafucci and editing by Stu Jackson. Find us on Twitter and Facebook by searching Aliens Explored or visit aliensexplored.com. <laughs>